My name is Volker Lynch. I'm the photo editor of Stern Magazine. Stern Magazine is a weekly magazine, mostly news oriented and very picture driven. From 85 to 92, I worked for Axel Springer Company for Bild Zeitung, which is the main daily newspaper in Germany. Every day we receive about 12,000 images, sometimes more, sometimes less. It depends on the situation and current events. We receive pictures from the whole world, from different agencies and independent photographers as well. So for Editor's Choice, I did the same edit like I do it every day for Stern magazine. So it's very important to look at the pictures, to see the action in the pictures, to look at interesting moments. You can see what people are interested in and what they feel they should enter to this kind of contest. So it's interesting on the one hand to see that people enter children photos or animal photos, which are kind of normal snapshot photos you and I do every weekend maybe with our family at home. But on the other hand, you have very good reportage style pictures. You have very classic black and white style images. So it's interesting to see that range The first picture, which is from Vincent Prevost from France. That's a guy who jumped from a high, it's not a kind of building, actually, I don't know how to describe it. It's a ritual on an island and the people kind of bungee jumping, but without a real bungee, so they have to jump down and you can look into this guy's face. He's kind of praying and looking down and it's fantastic to look at his face. You can kind of feel what he felt while jumping down from this maybe 10, 15 meters high tower. So it, it draw my attention immediately and it's fantastic. So it's one of my favorites in black and white. The next pictures I picked are done by Robert Eliasson from Sweden. It looks for me like he shot the, the two pictures on Cuba. It's an old man who is walking in the street and carrying a bass. I think it's acoustic. The house he's kind of passing is blue and his, he's wearing a red shirt. And this is a very colorful picture on the one hand. It's a very personal bass he's carrying and maybe he's up to go to a concert. This is again, it's a picture which kind of starts the imagination if you look at it. It's nicely done because of the different colors. It's almost blue, the picture is almost blue, and you have the sky with the red shirt and the base. And it's, for me, I like travel photography sometimes. And there's also the imagination of, this is usually a nice life to live on Cuba, but with all these problems they have, with getting food, getting a good job, and getting their freedom to travel and so on, but they still, try to do the best out of it. And the next one, well, the same photographer, it's a situation on the street where young people stopping in front of a car. One guy is stepping into the car, a woman in front, so it looks like a daily life scene somewhere on Cuba. It's a nice, lively scene on the street. The next picture, which is from Bogdan Cesaro from Romania, it's a very graphic picture. You see the, the shades of these workers. It looks like they're coming out of nowhere. You couldn't see the, the floor, you couldn't see the sky, something you have to orientate yourself while looking at this picture. It could have been a drawing also. It's not only photography, so it could be a black and white drawing also. Rodrigo Cruz from Mexico. He entered the reportage. For me, it looks like special police officers checked suspects and captured them. In the next picture, there's a guy in a jail. You can see in that jail, maybe five to six people all waiting to be released or to stay into custody. And it's the atmosphere. In the first picture, the, um, the suspect sits at the ground in front of a car and two masked policemen looking at him. Uh, point, one is pointing with a mag light on him, checking for details. He sits on the ground like exhausted. Maybe he was, they ran after him and he's exhausted. So it's a very special atmosphere in this picture.
And the other picture which I liked from the same photographer, Rodrigo Cruz, is a shot of police officers building a line out somewhere outside. I don't know where this happened. Maybe waiting for a demonstration or paying attention to something. But it's the look of this picture. The people and the police officers are masked with gas masks. And they have their shields in front of them. So it's uh, the power of these police officers, which is in these pictures. You can look at their faces a little bit. You can see the eyes from the guy in the middle, the left on the right. You can't see there's a reflection and the mask. So it's very strange and a bit dangerous. The next image is by Boza Ivanovich from the USA. He did a shot of an elephant. It looks a bit like Photoshop. I'm, I'm not sure if, if it was done in a zoo or in a museum, I don't know. You can't see actually if this elephant is alive or not. But looking at the silhouette from the elephant, it's very quiet too and it's very aesthetic for me. If you do a story on animal photography, it could, be, could fit very well on a single page. And the next picture is by Sue McDonald from the UK. She did a shot of a chimpanzee while looking down. It's also, it's a color picture, but it looks a bit black and white. Uh, you can only see the head and the mouth of the, the ape, and it's very graphic too. So I, in black and white, I like these graphic pictures. It's a very quiet, silent picture. And the next picture was shot by Boris Abbott from Switzerland. It's also a very graphic picture. You have to orientate yourself. It could be a boardwalk, but it's not. If you look, have a second look, it's a building. He looked up to the sky and shot this picture. It's very, very graphic. You can see the windows. It's a building only. It's very simple, but he saw this graphic aspect and he photographed it very well. The next one is by Hans van der Molen from the Netherlands. And he did a black and white shot. It's a seed falling down from a plant. And it looks like he caught the very last moment while the seed was going down, maybe blown away by the wind, or he did it by himself. And for sure, it's Photoshop too, because the background is very dark. You cannot do this in, in nature like this, but it, it's very aesthetic and it's very quiet too. So you see, my favorites in black and white are more both in graphic and these styled images. The last one I picked is a portrait of a woman and her child. It's shot by Alan Eason from South Africa. It's a woman sitting in a chair. And what's interesting, of course, on the one hand, there's the color. It's a bit green. It's light, uh, maybe because of an open window or open door. But it, what's interesting, there's a painting, and maybe an oil painting or acrylic painting in the background. It looks so strange. If you imagine this woman is sitting in Africa with no food or less food and you see this painting on the wall at the wall so it's an interesting portrait this could very well fit in a reportage about daily life in a certain village in Africa as well so I like the atmosphere I like the lighting in this picture it's very nice Look very closely to the object you want to submit pictures. If you come to, for example, in Germany to Stern or Spiegel magazine and offering only fashion photography, that would be nice for the fashion picture editor to look at. But it's not the way of photography we want. We look for classical photojournalistic stories. Don't offer stories to the magazine if they run it maybe one or two times within the, the period of 10 years, for example. But don't present to photo editors a selection of 100 pictures for one story. Uh, you can do it by showing prints, you can do it by showing on a computer screen, but the photo editor who don't know the story has to understand the story. Don't mix up publication, single image portrait, single image out of a reportage, put it in a clear order, reportage, portrait section and then maybe a few of publi a few publications not every photographer has the money the time or the possibility to travel to every editorial office so the, the good way would be to present the story idea as a pdf put in a selection of 10 15 pictures 
put in a general text and don't forget to put caption to every picture. I started the, the job in 1985, so it's quite a long time. And this is one of my hobbies on the one hand, and it's my profession. Every day is kind of a new day because you listen to the news, you look at the computer, see what had happened. And for me, that's very, very interesting.